On the first college football Saturday of the summer, Fox Sports Ohio brings you baseball on Fox Sports Ohio. The Reds take on the Pittsburgh Pirates as the Cincinnati Reds at PNC Park will try to start a win streak against the Buckos here in Steeltown. Hi, hello, and welcome to Pittsburgh, everyone, along with the crappy left-hander Chris Welch and Jim Day. I'm George Grand. Well, the Reds' time is running short as we hit the month of September. Coming up next, and for Chris, this team, they need a stopper. Johnny Cueto goes tomorrow, but they need Alfredo Simon to stop it today. Well, they essentially need to win about every game they're playing, especially against the Pirates here. Alfredo Simon started out after the All-Star break in horrid fashion. He was only 5 to one point. His earned run average was north of 5, but he turned it around his last time out. That was against the Atlanta Braves, too. A very good ball game. Seven innings, one run. Uh, only walked one and struck out six. So he was back to his old self, what we remember Simon as before the All Star break. Well, Alfredo Simon will go for the Reds, and Vance Worley will get the ball for the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Reds saw him as a Philly. He just came up from Indianapolis midsummer. He's been good, and he's been not so good. Well, uh, he was signed and added to the Pirates roster back in March as kind of an insurance policy, just in case some pitchers in the rotation were injured. Well, they did get injured. He's been up and down throughout his Major League career. Right now, he's riding the worst streak of his career, three consecutive losses, but he's capable of a very good ball game. He's a guy that mixes in a couple of different breaking balls along with a pedestrian fastball all about anywhere 90 to 92 miles an hour. But if his control is on, he can give this red team some problems, just like last night's starter, Edinson Volquez. Edinson Volquez pitched brilliantly last night. So did Mike Leake. Reds didn't get a win as Josh Harrison did in his former home team. Coming up next, the Reds will try to bank a victory at PNC Park, score some runs, and come up with a W against the Buckos. Ohio is brought to you by your local Ford dealer. Ford, go further. Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. And by Skyline Chili. Feeling good? It's Skyline time. 
I'm Jim Day on the field here at PNC Park. If a recent trend holds up, the Reds would like to get to Pirate starter Vance Worley early today. It's part of our Elk and Elk storylines brought to you by Elk and Elk. Serious lawyers for serious injuries call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. Vance Worley in his last three starts in which he lost all three allowed 11 runs in the first two innings, but just four after the second inning. So the Reds would be who to him, be who to get to him early and certainly score more than they did last night. Can their offense wake up and break it out? We'll find out together. Along for the call, once again, it's George Grant and Chris Wells. Gentlemen. Thank you, J.D. We'll keep you up to date on what's happening down around the dugout as the afternoon progresses. Let's check Brian Price's starting lineup, our Myers starting lineup, and once again, a new lineup after the Reds had pretty much the same lineup for four days in a row. Billy Hamilton will lead it off. Todd Frazier back second. Frazier against the Pirates, 316. And it gets Worley in his career, two for three and a homer. Brandon Phillips, who has had some success against Worley, is four for eight. That's third. And has Rocco in the cleanup spot. Brian Payne, you back in the lineup at first. It'll be Jay Bruce down to the number six spot. Zach Cozart moves up to the seventh spot. Schumacher hits eighth, and Alfredo Simon hits in the number nine position. That's your Myers starting lineup. And here's Vance Worley. Uh, Vance Worley, former Philadelphia Philly, a young man that was drafted twice by the Phillies, once out of high school, once out of college. He signed out of college and came over here to the Pirates right at the end of spring training this year. The Pirates thought they needed some depth, maybe some insurance in case somebody went on the disabled list on their starting rotation. And here is Worley making start number 13 of the season here at Pittsburgh. The former of Long Beach State varsity baseball player ready to go to work against Billy Hamilton. Hamilton's been great at PNC Park and great against the Pirates. Billy overall 395 and 11 stolen bases here. And last night again a trigger to the Reds offense. He reached in the sixth inning on a walk stole a base went to third on an error. And then in the eighth inning had a base hit and stole another base. Time for IGS bringing you the energy career at PNC Park. There are the 395 numbers with four doubles five runs batted in 10 runs and the 11 stolen bases for the man with the happy feet. Your home plate umpires Brian Knight Jimmy Reynolds is down at first Manny Gonzalez at second in the crew chief field and Culbreth is your third base umpire. One ball two strikes. The corners third and first drop back after they get to the two strike number and Chris it's never more evident every time we see Billy at the plate last night was another example. The only two sustained rallies the Reds had started with Billy Hamilton getting on base. Well, they did. And, and you know, considering all the extra outs that Pittsburgh Pirates gave the Reds last night, you're kind of disappointed they weren't able to take more advantage of it. Takes a little bit uh, out of steady by the fastball. Is he Hamilton? After steady by the fastball, he finally pulled the string and got him way out in front. Strike out number one for Worley, and here comes Todd Frazier. Frazier, 278, 22 homers, 69 knocked in. Frazier had an 0 for 4 night last night. He hit two balls right on the button, but two brilliant defensive plays one by Marte and left, and another by Josh Harrison, he had five of them last night, robbed him of a hit down at third. Swing and a miss. And it's a ball and a strike. Well, Brian Price has fiddled around with this lineup, trying to find somebody who can take over the number two spot to hit after Billy Hamilton. Maybe get some fastballs and maybe get on base in front of the number three and four guys. And of course, Todd Frazier has been all of those people. He's been number two, he's been a number three spot. He has been a cleanup hitter before. Jay Bruce has been tried in that number two spot with not a lot of success, especially recently. Yeah, there are different ways to get fastballs for good hitters. One is to put them behind a speedy base runner like Billy Hamilton in the number two spot. Another is to get him in front of. Uh, 
heavy hitting third or fourth batter in the lineup and managers in many cases will try to protect young players or get people out of slumps by putting them in either of those two slots. I mean Joey Votto had a great comment when they moved him up to the number two spot and he said in my career I feel this is the the most I've been protected having Billy Hamilton in front of me because I know I'm going to get some fastballs. That's foul to the right side. And sometimes all it takes is that one game to get you going. Isn't it? Well, you're right, but you know sometimes that can be a two-edged sword too because you get fastballs, but you're also asked to take a pitch or two if Hamilton is on base, give him a chance to steal. And sometimes that puts you into a count situation that you don't want to be in behind an account. Some guys don't don't really mind that hitting with two strikes. In fact, Votto is one that seems to be very patient to play, so he's never really afraid. I think to go deep into account. Like that happened to Frazier last night. He took two pitches and then struck out finally in that sixth inning rally. Here's your fourth defensive alignment for the Buckos, who are worst in the league with 96 errors. Marte, McCutcheon, great speed in the outfield. Lambeau just up from Indianapolis at right. Harrison, Mercer, Walker, Davis across the infield, and Russell Martin behind the plate for Worley. That's your forward defensive alignment. Here's Brandon at 263, seven homers, 44 knocked in. Phillips last night 0 for 3 and hit by a pitch. Hit by a pitch was part of the rally in the eighth inning. It was a 0 0 game till the eighth. With one out, Hamilton reached on a single, stole second. Phillips was hit by a pitch, and then it was the base hit by Mezzarocco that plated a run. Phillips was out trying to score. Five to four, they'll get one, and on to first, they'll turn the double play. So Reds get a base runner, but around the horn, five, four, three, DP erases him. To the bottom of one we go. Here comes Alfredo Simon. Of the year in the National League has his team still fighting for the playoffs this year. They're three back in the division and a game and a half back in the wild card. Let's check his starting lineup, sponsored by Meyer. Josh Harrison, the star of the game last night, offensively and defensively, back in the leadoff spot where he's hitting 321. In August, overall, 342. Andrew Lambeau had a pitch hit last night, that second. McCutcheon. In the number three spot, Neil Walker hits fourth. Russell Martin in the five hole. Ike Davis is down in first. Starling Marte, who's been outstanding in August, hits in the seventh spot. Jordy Mercer, the shortstop, hits eight. And Vance Worley, the pitcher, bats in the number nine position. And here's Alfredo Simon. Well, 13 and eight now is Alfredo Simon. He was 12 and three before the All Star break. It was the All Star break that really defined his beginning of the season. He's been named to his first All Star team as a representative of the Reds, but. He went 0 5 after the break very quickly and not always pitching poorly, but his earned run average did rise up there. He had some horrible starts, uh, and that earned run average creeped up over five during that period of time. Sunday, a different story. 
That's when he pitched seven innings of one run ball against the Atlanta Braves and maybe he's back on the beam trying to nail down today's start. For win number 14. Seven innings five hits one run and six strikeouts in that outing against Atlanta. Here's Harrison three for four last night. He's hit in four straight and Josh has become. The fan favorite here in Pittsburgh. I mean, you know about Andrew McCutcheon, an MVP, and on this team this year, Josh Harrison so far has been the MVP. And Chris, it's not out of the question. His manager, Clint Hurdle, says he's been more valuable than anybody else on this roster, and he could be the MVP of the league. Well, yeah, that's probably a stretch because a utility guy normally doesn't get a lot of the credit that he deserves, and Harrison is in that mold. High in the air to center field, Billy Hamilton cruising in. Got it for one away. Here's your fourth defensive alignment for the Reds. Best in the National League, only 60 errors on the season. In left is Skip Schumacher, Hamilton in center, Jay Bruce in right. Frazier's back at third, Pena moves to first. Cozart and Phillips, your double play combo for Brandon Phillips. This is now. For Brandon, a 92 game airless streak. That's his longest and the longest by any second baseman in the league this year. Mezzarocco behind the plate. That's your four defensive alignment. Here's Andrew Lambeau, and he came up from Indianapolis yesterday, had his first at bat, and continued what has been a big boost to the Buckos this year, and he does it again. Two at bats. He had a base hit last night, and his first at bat today, he gets another base hit. Last night, his base hit gave the Pirates their 51st pinch hit of the season. That's best in the league. Another look. Well, here's a young man with tons of power. He hit 32 home runs last year in the minor leagues, drove in 99 in a minor league year. And he's one of those intriguing players that Clint Hurdle mentioned that, you know, maybe before we look outside the organization, we pay attention to the pop we have inside our own organization. Lambo is that guy, and he goes opposite field there to get a base hit. Lambo was scheduled to come up as Simon goes to the stretch. Not a real threat to run, but he was scheduled to come up earlier in the year and he broke his hand. So that kind of put him on the sidelines and now he's back as an addition for the month of September. And he's activated prior to September the 1st, so he would be eligible if the Pirates make it to the postseason. Here's McCutcheon at 306, 20 homers, 71 knocked in. And you talk about the impact that Harrison has had. But this guy is still the man. Number 22 is the MVP. Number 22 is a guy who's playing hurt with rib difficulties, but still trying to gut it out for his ball club, and he's still producing the 306, 20 homers, and 71 knocked in. Three balls, no strikes. He really didn't have much in the way of a good at bats last night, and really trying to take a hard look at McCutcheon. Even though he did get a base hit, it, it does look like his back is bothering him. He's not really wheeling that bat the way he normally does. He's not running like he did. Kind of gutting it out, knowing that he's nicked up a little bit. Four for 16 and a homer in his career against Simon. That's in there for a strike. Of course, if you're afraid of Simon, you don't know that. And maybe even if you do recognize that, you're still not going to take the chance of just grooving one to. McCutcheon for fear that today he feels a whole lot better than last night. 3 1. Missing inside. That's ball four. So a base hit and a walk. Two on one out, and here comes Neil Walker. Steps in at 274, 17 home runs on the season. That's number one among second basemen in the National League, and 56 knocked in. In fact, he's within striking distance of the all time single season home run record for the Buckos, and that's the great Bill Mazeroski. Maz did it back in 1958, known more for his defense, but Maz made Forbes Field his home. Ryan Price looks on, hoping that he gets a strong start from his big right hander here after losing last night, two to one. Simon to the stretch. 
This one hit deep right field. Back is Bruce looking up. It is gone. Number 18 for Walker, and it's 3 nothing Pittsburgh in the first. First pitch fastball after walking the batter ahead of him. And pretty much right down Broadway, and that's all Neil Walker needs. Well, you wonder how many of the fans in this ballpark today, and it's going to be a jammed house here at PNC Park. We're next door at Heinz Field to watch Pitt demolish the University of Delaware 62 to nothing. They come over here, and the Pirates get three runs here in the first inning without really much effort at all. And Chris, you talked a lot about it in recent starts for Simon. It's not so much velocity, it's location. Dangerous spot. Especially with Walker's power. Here's Martin, 292, seven homers, 51 knocked in. Left center. Hamilton can't get to it. He'll get the carom off the fence and cruising into second with a double is Martin. Well, Simon has pitched twice earlier this year against the Pittsburgh Pirates, and he's done a lot of this, which is putting the ball right down Broadway and also having not much control outside of the zone. In 13 innings against the Pirates this year, he's walked eight and given up nine hits. So the Pirates evidently see the ball coming out of his hand pretty well. One one let's start was back in April, another was in May or it was in June, and he's Already down three zip with a runner in scoring position here in the first inning. Martin was not one of those that had had success. That's the first hit he's ever had against Simon. He had been 0 for 9. And Walker had been 1 for 10 coming into today, but they've turned it around in this inning. Here's Ike Davis, 240, 10 homers, 44 knocked in. Martin sitting on second. Down in the third base coach's box for the Pirates today, veteran former manager and third base coach Nick Leva, 38 years in professional baseball, and Rick Sofield down at first. That's a strike. And behind in the count, a lot in this first inning. And he's behind a Davis two and one. Backhanded by Pena, he staggers and over to tap the bag. Finally, is Simon. They get the out second out of the inning. That'll move the runner to third with two away. And here's Marte. You know, when you're a pitcher that has given up a big number in the first inning, you've got to convince yourself that you're in a 0 0 ball game. You can't go out there thinking, well, you know, I've given up three runs, my shot out's gone, my chance of complete game probably gone, you know, and start thinking negative. You've got to try your best to put your put it out of your mind because a lot of times after a team will score early in the game, their offense goes to sleep if you concentrate and get the pitches down and put them where you want them. A lot of it's about attitude from here on for Alfredo Santa. Martin down to third. Marte, who's been red hot. Last 21 games over 350. That's got the average back over to 275. Spent some time on the DL since the first week in August. He's been solid playing some center field when McCutcheon was out and every day in left. Foul to the right side. No balls, two strikes. 
You missed it last night. San Francisco beat Milwaukee 13 to 3. The Cubs beat the Cardinals 7 to 2. So today, Milwaukee starts the day with a game and a half lead over St. Louis, three over the Pirates, eight and a half over the Reds in the Central. In the wild card, San Francisco, St. Louis, the two wild card spots own now. Atlanta game back, Pittsburgh a game and a half back, and the Reds seven back. Simon has it. He'll tap the runner, but the damage done. A single by Lambo, a walk to McCutcheon, and Neil Walker's 18th home run make it three nothing Pittsburgh. Play MLB.com. Beat the streak today. Great to have you with us, George Grand, Chris Welsh, Jim Day at PNC Park in Pittsburgh. Neil Walker's 18th home run of the year has given the Buckos a 3 0 lead as we go to the second. Very pleasant day. Humidity is starting to move back in. Chance of showers moving in for tomorrow. Another sellout crowd here today. They had their 16th of the year yesterday in a Festive downtown Pittsburgh at the confluence. University of Pittsburgh 62 to nothing over Delaware. Oh a couple hundred yards from here at Heinz Field. They've got the ribs cook off that Jesse Jackson has sampled Chris. He didn't bring us any did he? No you, you figure George of all the things we've done for him along the way that we'd have a couple of slabs sitting right in front of us right here. Not so. When I shook hands with him, though, you still smell that and, and barbecue it was sauce too. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Well, maybe they just didn't transfer uh, travel very well. I mean, after all, it is a couple blocks from here. He was going to bring him to us, but that couple of blocks <laughs> kind of devoured him. <laughs> Here's Worley to face Mezzarocco, Pena, and Bruce. The other hope is J.D. We haven't seen him for a while. We'll have to track him down. He may be over there now. We'll find him sometime in the next inning or so. Here's Mezzarocco, 282, 20, homer 65 knocked in. He had a base hit in the eighth that gave the Reds a 1-0 lead. Loop to the right side and into the seats. Reds and Pirates on the season. The Reds have won nine of the 15 games played between the two teams. And they will end the season in Cincinnati. The last three games of this 2014 regular season will be the Pirates at Cincinnati. Dribble down to third. Harrison. One away. I mean, you know the spectacular way Josh Harrison played third last night for the Pirates, and it's 
not out of the question to say had he not been on third that the Reds probably would have won the game last night. He was just spectacular defensively and to go along with it he was three for four offensively. Well you know you hit a big when they're selling t-shirts in town here with your nickname on it and his nickname here is Jay Hay. As in H A Y Y Y. And uh, he's big time. No doubt about it. Great kid. Had a chance to sit down and talk with him. We'll run that interview on our pregame show tomorrow. And uh, just a wonderful young man who I hope would save his better games for somebody else <laughs> besides <Yeah>. the Reds. <laughs> well, his uncle, John T. Bone Shelby, told us years ago, he said, this kid's going to be something. I don't know what. He may be a boxer. He may be a football player, but he's going to be something. Pena bounces this one. High hop. Nice play by Davis to take the tricky hop two away. Hey, as you continue to tweet your photos using the hashtag Ohio Fan Photo, here's today's fan photo of the game brought to you by ATT. Coming up later, we'll have it for you. Now you go into a game with a goal and the way Worley's pitched this year Chris the goal is to get through the first two without getting deluge. He's had difficulty in the first two innings but so far he's controlling it. Well nothing like a three spot on your behalf to really give you some confidence. I mean he he walked the second batter of the game that he faced when when he put Todd Frazier on but when your team scores three and you know the one home run can't tie the game up or put you down you have a tendency to attack the strike zone a little bit better you would think anyway. As he goes 2-0 to Jay Bruce. He's always had a unique delivery style. It's modified since we saw him in Philadelphia, but it is a little different. Well, the beginning of it you call kind of a side saddle, a side saddle stride. Uh, where he doesn't really face directly towards home plate. He faces more towards the third base bag. Almost like he's pitching out of the stretch. A lot more pitchers nowadays are beginning to do that because that abbreviated step back with his left foot. Has a tendency to keep you a little bit more in balance. If you overstride that, that's when your your delivery gets out of whack. Actually, a guy who who taught that for a long time when he was teaching young kids to pitch uh, when he worked for us at Champions Baseball Academy was was Teddy Power, uh, and you take a lot of the movement out of a young pitcher that way, and you keep him a little bit more compact. Uh, congratulations to Jim Riegelman, Teddy Power, and the guys down at Louisville this year. They've had so many people moving in and out, up and down with the injuries that the Reds have. They hung in there in the race for a long time this year. They've eliminated, been eliminated from postseason play in the International League, but uh, another great job down at AAA for the Reds. Let's go one, two, three. They failed three nothing.
outside of the stadium on the Roberto Clemente Bridge, and it's closed down. Only pedestrian traffic before games, and it's been busy today with all the events going on that the guys have talked about. But did you know there's a European connection on this bridge? If you walk across it, there are tons of locks attached to the fencing here of the bridge, and these are the ones that you need a key to unlock it. Now, it signifies and memorializes love. Undying love. Couples come up here and they lock their lock and they throw their keys into the river. And this was started in Europe by uh, European author Federico Mocha. Thousands of bridges and bridges in Paris, Rome, Venice, and other European cities have locks all over them, thousands of which. And now it's caught on here in Pittsburgh. And guys, I've always said, nothing says love like <laughs> Pittsburgh equals love. You know, Jim, I got to ask you, I use that bridge to walk to and from the ballpark. Now, you wouldn't think that there are so many locks on that bridge that it may be in danger of having too much weight. I mean, should I take another bridge home? No, I think you're safe because the city has looked into this and I think they're fine with the, the locks out here. I did read that there was a pedestrian bridge in Paris that actually collapsed yes. because of the locks. There were thousands and thousands of locks on the bridge. And you're right. It became a uh, public safety concern so not as many locks out here but there are a number of them and uh, kind of a cool thing well glad you're extolling the virtues of love I'm all about love Chris Welsh. JD you know we've got our, our JD hit list of all the places uh, you know you've done some, some shots in the bridge there but one of our favorites Chris is still uh, tracking the baseball dropping it here at PNC Park and see how long it would take to get to Cincinnati. Yeah, all the calculations, you know, with the, how fast the current is and how many nautical miles it would take to get to Cincinnati via the river. And then he dropped that baseball in the river. And what happened? It went right to the bottom. So see, we'll never know if it ever rolled its way to Cincinnati or was eaten by a catfish. What do you think, J.D.? We got another another way to try it? Well, we can try it. It took 45 seconds for that bad That's boy right. to sink. So the baseball is not going to float to Cincinnati. That is not happening. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Here's Vance Worley after Mercer grounds out to Frazier at third. He's taken care of quickly. That is strikeout number one for Simon. Two away. And here's Harrison with two outs in the second inning up for the second time. A settled down inning for Alfredo after he gave up a walk. A single, a homer, and a double in the first, and trails three nothing. Now, Chris, you talk often about tools, and we, you know, high draft picks are always labeled. You know, what do they have? Oh, this guy has all the tools to be a successful athlete, but. Sometimes it's baseball instincts, drive, and determination that makes the difference whether if somebody succeeds or not. And you also have somebody to champion you. And I think in Clint Hurdle, when a lot of people in the Pirate organization didn't believe in Josh Harrison, he believed in him. Very similar to when Hurdle believed in Clint Barmus when he was in Colorado. That's a rocket into center. And a hit for Harrison. He's one for two. You need somebody like that. Similar, I think, this year. Brian Price in spring training talked about how he and Jay Bell were impressed with Christopher Negron. Negron's getting a chance now. You need somebody to champion you to get here. You're right, and you need to be able to take advantage of the opportunity when it presents itself. And Harrison has done exactly that. You know, he was, I think, a sixth round draft pick when he left the University of Cincinnati. He was drafted by the Cubs. And but if you look around, I mean the majority of players that you see on an everyday basis in the major leagues are former number one draft picks because rarely do you miss or you shouldn't miss especially in the first 10 taken in, in, in the, out of a draft. Uh, so you look around the infield the Reds uh, Todd Frazier high round draft pick I think the same for Cozart Brandon Phillips obviously yes uh, Jay Bruce Billy Hamilton uh, maybe not a, a first round pick for Hamilton but pretty pretty high up there and but when you get a guy a little bit lower in the rounds uh, and he makes it to the major league it's always a feel good story because you feel like he beat the odds you know they probably told Josh Harrison growing up you know you're not you're not big enough you're not strong enough you can't hit the ball far enough your arms not good enough to play shortstop there goes Harrison here comes the throw and they got him 
caught for the sixth time with 17 stolen bases is Josh Harrison. One, two, three in the inning, even with the base hit. Another look at the quick tag in second by Kozar. Fifty three cut today as the Bengals cut down to their final roster before the opener. Which Buckeye changed his number to play tribute to the injured Braxton Miller? Plus, get complete Buckeyes coverage from today's opener against Navy. Get complete coverage of all of today's action involving Ohio sports on FoxSportsOhio.com. Brought to you by 1 800 Safe Auto Drive. Safe, spend less. Buckeyes finally did come home with a victory 34 17 over Navy. Be an interesting first couple of weeks, Chris, trying to get the offense retooled. I mean, it's like losing your starting rotation right before the opener, at the start of a season. Yeah, and from a personal standpoint, for Braxton Miller, it, it, it's just so oh. disappointing for a young man to have worked as hard as he did to have an injury like that and set him back an entire year. He's committed to come back and try to play football at Ohio State again, but still, in all, it, it's a it's a real shame. Here's Zach Cozart will lead it off as we go to the third Schumacher and Simon do to follow. Cozart and a 229 overall three homers and 25 knocked in for the season. Hitting it a little bit better as of late though. It's kind of patenting this late August into September just like last year all of a sudden things start to click for him. The 0 for 3 last night ended his four game hitting streak, which included an 8 for 15 streak. Two balls, no strikes to the red shortstop. Morley now 26 years old. I mentioned that he was drafted twice by the Philadelphia Phillies. They really liked him. They liked him out of high school and they picked him in the 20th round in 2005. He decided not to go. He ended up going to Long Beach State, played for the 49ers there, and was drafted and moved up to the third round three years later in 2008. That's when he signed. 3 0. And he got to the major leagues in 2011 as a Philadelphia Philly. He was up and down from Lehigh Valley. That's their AAA franchise. But by September the 11th of 2011, he was 11 and 1, and his earned run average was 2.8. And the Phillies had run off a streak of winning 14 consecutive of his starts. That year, he ended up third in the league in Rookie of the Year honors. That was the year that Craig Kimbrell and Freddie Freeman dominated most of the voting.
Then a year later, he was traded to the Minnesota Twins. In fact, he was their opening day pitcher in 2013. But he had bad control problems. He really didn't show much to the Twins anything that he, they thought that they were getting. And eventually was put on waivers. And that's where the Pittsburgh Pirates grabbed him here at the end of March of 2014. Just about three days before the season started, they signed him for a deal that included a player to be named later. And the end result is he's up in August and September in the middle of a pennant race. Well, the Pirates had a couple pitchers go down early on. I mean, uh, Wandy Rodriguez never really contributed this year like they thought he would. Liriano has been on and off the disabled list. Derek Cole has been on the disabled list and they didn't have enough depth and that's why they went out and tried to, to shop for some extra insurance. Very similar to the deal that the Reds made a few springs ago for Alfredo Simon. When they picked him up from the Baltimore Orioles. Two balls two strikes fouled off. And similar to to what the Reds did. Chin Ming Wan, Jeff Francis signed to minor league deals by the Reds, wondering if they might prove to be a key component early in the year. Neither one of them with the Reds any longer. 2 2. That's outside, full count, three balls, two strikes. And a more recent acquisition of insurance in Dylan Axelrod, who's pitched a couple of times now with the Reds and done very well. Looks like he'll be in the rotation between now and the end of the year, unless something startling happens. 3 2. Schumacher thought it was down and in. It's a call strike three, and that's three strikeouts for Worley. Two away here in the third. Here comes Simon. Now Schumacher walks away without saying anything. A seven pitch at bat that looks like it's a strike by our Fox tracks. Chris was a year ago that I think we were both impressed by Craig Reynolds when he came up late in August into September and helped the Reds and so far I think have to be impressed by Dylan Axelrod this year. Well he throws strikes and he changes speeds he keeps the ball down and he's shown himself to be very serviceable. He was in the major leagues for the most part of last year. He was in the minor leagues with the Washington or the uh, Chicago White Sox this year. When you make a deal like that in July for a, a guy in somebody else's AAA franchise and you put him in your rotation, it kind of is an indication of where your own pitchers are at the top of the food chain in AAA right now. A little bit on the side. For
Friday, September 5th through Sunday, September 7th. See your Red Legs battle the Mets at Great American Ballpark. Purchase four Reds tickets for only $48 and receive a $15 Hofbrau House voucher. For tickets, call 513-381-REDS. Visit select Kroger locations or reds.com slash four for 48. A look down at the Roberto Clemente Bridge to downtown Pittsburgh. Humidity creeping back in. Chance of showers tomorrow and the boats waiting for a long ball. Good contingent of Reds fans here. Here's Andrew Lambeau to lead it off bottom of three. McCutcheon and Walker to follow. This is the part of the order that did the damage in the first. Lambeau. Second at bat since coming up his second hit a base hit to left McCutcheon walked on a 3 2 pitch and then Walker slammed his 18th homer Zippo 3 nothing buckles. There's that pitch Chris that we saw a lot in the first half not as much here in the second half reinventing a long looping breaking ball. Well it is it comes in anywhere between 60 and 65 miles an hour. The FX system, which charts all the pitches at Major League Diamonds, calls it a splitter. I think it's just a, an invention. Front of the warning track. Bruce has it one away. Added a little bit to that one. It came in at 72. Talking to Jay Bruce after the game last night, you look at that right field wall, and when they first opened this, Chris, you and I both went out to take a look at that scoreboard behind the right fielder. It's an electronic scoreboard, and in front of it is a chain link fence that has a couple of spots that jut out. Here's McCutcheon, and the Pirates know full well, their right fielders know that you don't always get a true hop off it. Sometimes the ball will carry him to the left or carry him to the right, and that contributed to the triple last night. You figured it'd be a double for Harrison, but. The way it kicked away from Bruce, it wound up being a triple. Yeah, you know what happens a lot of times like that is that you're in pursuit of the ball and you think maybe you've got a chance to catch it. And then when you realize you're not going to be able to catch it, you run out of space, you're so close to the wall that any kind of hard carom is going to get by you. And I think that's what happened to Jay last night. One ball, one strike to McCutcheon, who walked and scored on the homer in the first. Check swing, fouled off. Scoreboard watching the Cubs are leading the Cardinals 5 1 in the eighth inning, the first of that doubleheader. After the Cubs won last night, a 7 2 win over the Redbirds. Reds leave town tomorrow after the final scheduled game of this series. They have an off day on Monday in Baltimore, and it's Matt Latos. Dylan Axelrod and Mike Leak Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in Baltimore at Camden Yards. Did he go? Yes, he did. McCutcheon disposed of. That is strikeout number two for Simon, and that'll bring up Walker. Yeah, really adding up right here. 91 on the fastball and. You can see it's really right by Andrew McCutcheon. No argument from him since he was rung up swinging at that pitch. McCutcheon battling back and rib difficulties, and Chris just watching him the last couple of days. The swing's not the same. No, it's not. Not explosive as it usually is. You know, and you go down. And I guess at this stage of the year, nobody's fully healthy. Well, I know he's not. I was in the private clubhouse last night after the ball game, and uh, he was over there, had a big ice wrap around his his ribs and back, and I'm sure it's still bothering him. One ball, one strike to Walker. Alfredo got a little rise out of the crowd here with that slow one. <laughs>
Two and one. Off the end of the bat right there is Bruce. He has it and there is the first one two three inning without a hit for the Reds. Alfredo Simon. Going to the fourth top of the order. Billy Hamilton do up. Sports you'll have being brought to you by JTM Food Group. Let's create great dishes together. By Toyota for over 30 Toyota offers. Visit buyatoyota.com. And go for the save on wing Tuesdays at B Dubs with specially priced wings all day long. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, sports. Hey, the Reds and Fox Sports Ohio would like to wish a very happy 87th birthday today to Betty Heath. Of Circleville, Ohio. Betty, happy birthday to you. Thanks for rooting for the Reds and thanks for sticking with us. A happy 87 candles for you on this day. Good day to celebrate the Reds, celebrate baseball, and celebrate a birthday, too. By the way, today would have been Ted Williams' birthday. 1918, a splendid splinter. Greatest hitter ever, Chris. I never saw him hit, George, but I everything I read would tell you indicate that. Although you could say that the greatest hitter ever would have the most hits, right? Yep. And I would have to say Pete Rose would be that guy. Nobody had more than number 14. And speaking of birthdays, one he shares with you. And uh, hopefully that's a long way off. <laughs> You'll be 39 again next April, right? Here's Billy Hamilton, top of the order, struck out first time up. In the air to center, McCutcheon almost in his tracks. Will haul it in. And there's one away. Speaking of birthdays, George, I'd like to send out a birthday wish to Eileen Whitsett, who turned 80 actually yesterday, and I forgot all about wishing you happy birthday yesterday, Eileen. You're up in Coldwater, Ohio. You never miss a Reds fan on Fox Sports Ohio. And want to thank you for tuning in. And also be remembered to your daughter, Becky Whitsett, who sent me the email suggesting that I. So it wasn't Becky's fault. It was, it it was, was our my fault. fault. <laughs> Beck, you're off the hook. <laughs> Hope you're watching today, too. Here's Todd Frazier walked in the first and erased on a double play ground ball. Final 5 1. Cubs beat the Cardinals in the first of two. 
Reds still have a couple of series with the Redbirds still to come. When they finish with 16 of the last 19 against teams in contention in the Central Division. Cardinals will come to Cincinnati on the 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th, and then the Reds will head to St. Louis on the 19th, 20th, and 21st. You know, sometimes we make so many observations of stats. You split things up versus righties, lefties, day and night. Interesting stat, though, really on the Pirates overall as far as day and night. The Reds are 28 and 20 when they play during the daytime. Pretty good left center field. Not Marte either. on his horse. Forget it. That's going to be gone. A big bolt from Todd Frazier. That's number 23 on the season, and the Reds are on the board. It's 3 1. A no doubter. I was wondering why Vance Worley was pitching to Todd Frazier so carefully there in the first inning. Even in this at bat, he got down 2 0 to him. And when Frazier hit that ball, Andrew McCutcheon didn't even move. All he did was watch the fly of the baseball. Now in his career, three for four and two home runs, Frazier against Worley. Well, one handed grab by that fan right there. Nice How about job. that? Nicely done. Well, anyway, going back to the Pirates and their struggles during the day. During the daytime, they are 17 and 26 during the day. And the next eight games that they will play, seven of those will be daytime games, including tomorrow and then Sunday, or then Monday, they'll play a day game in St. Louis. Walker over. He's got it. Phillips is retired for the second out of the inning. Pirates month of September. They'll play the Cardinals for three this coming week. Then have the Cubs on the road and four against the Phillies on the road. Then play the Cubs at home. And after that, they've got three against the Red Sox right in the middle of. The well, final two weeks of the season. They have four against Atlanta before they come to Cincinnati for the final three of the season. Those could be pivotal games, especially in the wild card hunt, because going into play today, Atlanta one game back, the Pirates a game and a half back in the wild card hunt. And you know, I mean, it's never over till it's over, as Yogi says, but a lot can happen between now and then. I mean, the Reds' hopes and chances for the division. It would take a miracle for them to get back and win the division. But when people beat each other, if you win, you can make hay in the wild card hunt. The Reds starting today, seven games back in the wild card hunt. Miami six back. Pittsburgh a game and a half back, and Atlanta one game back. I mean, we've seen colossal collapses in September, Chris, and we've seen remarkable bounce backs. Fly ball right. Mezzarocco retired on the fly ball out, but the Reds get on the board. 23rd round tripper from number 21. 3 1. Reds trail by two.
Sports Ohio. Kept the Coral Brian Giesenslaw there for all the pregame festivities. Kent Dream Weaver, Ron Millenor, Rob Overberg, Matt Coiner, the whole crew keeping you up to date on everything. And Brian will be there for all the postgame activities today, too. Tomorrow's probables, Chris. Johnny Cueto will again try for his 16th victory against Francisco Liriano. That's a matchup we remember well. Boy, who would have ever thought that Liriano would be 3 and 10 this year? It seems like every time he pitches against the Reds, he figures out how to throw up a good game. But Johnny Cueto, with 15 wins on the year, you got to like your chances with him on the mound anytime he takes the ball. Russell Martin sends this down the right field line, but foul by about 20 feet. Martin ended 0 for 9 streak against Simon with a double in the first. He was left stranded at third. He'll lead it off in the fourth, followed by Ike Davis and then Starling Marte. Good spot down and in, swing and a miss, 0 and 2. I mean, yes, McCutcheon's the MVP. Yes, Josh Harrison has had a remarkable year. But in that clubhouse, this guy really was the start of bringing it all together, Chris. A leader on the field and off for the Pirates. Strikeout number three for Simon. All of a sudden, Alfredo's beginning to really deal. I mean, it looked like in that first inning there, he gave up a base hit to Lambeau, then the walk to McCutcheon, and quickly on the first pitch, he saw a home run. And we'll call that our flamethrower strikeout brought to you by Cholula Hot Sauce. As Simon gets his third of the afternoon. There's Ike Davis. Bounce to pain your first time up 0 for 1. Slap the other way and out of play for strike one. Strikes to the first baseman for the Buckos. Now, when number 31 goes home at the end of this year, Chris, irrespective of what the final numbers are, this will certainly be a year that he'll remember for finally getting a chance to show that he could start at the major league level and proving he could do it and do it well. And probably like to continue his chance of doing that next year. But he'll also be tired. Yep. I mean, because right now Alfredo Simon has thrown approximately 1,100 more pitches this year than he did last year. And he's thrown more this year than he has ever had in a previous major league season. Of course, most for the most part, Simon has worked out of the bullpen. So you measure fatigue out of the bullpen in terms of number of games rather than number of innings or number of pitches. One, two, bounced up there, two, two. Should he prepare differently this offseason than he has in the past? Well, I'm not really sure if that's the case. I think what you learn when you go through a whole season is the mental rigor that it takes to get through a season as a major league pitcher. I mean, physically, it looks like he's still fine. Still throwing the ball 95 miles an hour. Pena will smother this and tap the bag. So twice Davis has bounced out to Pena two away. And here comes Marte. Anytime you get past that 150 inning mark when you've never been there before, it's not just the physical strain, it's the mental, emotional, and grinding stage of a season that will separate those who hang around and those who don't. Marte bounced back to the pitcher first time up. I mean with the kind of money that they're paying starting pitchers nowadays. I mean why would you aspire to be a middle reliever. 
You're thinking of coming out of retirement, aren't no. you? No. <laughs> but that's one of the main motivations for somebody like Alfredo Simon. I mean, he's 31 years old. He can see the end of the line at some point. But if you can get, you know, three or four or five years as a starter under your belt, you can make some pretty doggone good money nowadays. And I think there are a lot of teams who have scouted Alfredo Simon this year that think that this guy might fit into their plans. I mean, his stuff is filthy, is filthy and nasty. I mean, you just have to talk to some of the other hitters around the league and say, man, this guy stands on the mound. He's six six. He looks like a, an offensive lineman. He's throwing mid nineties. He can, he can dial it back to in the sixties. So you've got a lot to worry about there. He's got a little two seam fastball, but he runs in on your hands. It just eats your knuckles up. And he showed the baseball world what he could do with that 12 and 3 first half of the season. One ball, two stanks to Marte. Down and in again, he wants it. And he gets it. Mezzarocco takes care of it. That's three straight, one, two, three innings. Reds back to work, trailing 3 1. Pena will lead it off. Sell save fifty percent and get MLB.com at bat premium features for only four ninety nine. Follow every Reds game with live look ins, replay reviews, live radio broadcast, the MLB.tv game of the day, and more. Download on the App Store. Sale in soon. Visit Reds.com/slash/mobile today. I'm Jim Day and Jay Bruce do up second in this inning uh, a couple days ago what he called the most embarrassing moment of his career in which he struck out five times. Now he has been working on leveling out his swing and a couple of days ago was a grand experiment because he held his hand six to seven inches lower with that knee bothering him trying anything to level out that swing so as you guys talked about you can't simulate game speed so he tried it in a game and he said he's never felt so unnatural at the plate and by the fifth at bat about the third pitch in, he said you know the heck with this I'm going back to this holding my hands higher he did strike out five times but needless to say that grand experiment lasted only one day he's back to his hands raised and fans out there please do not misconstrue this is not Jay Bruce making excuses in fact he didn't want to talk about it. We asked specific questions about it, and he answered the questions. He is not an excuse-making guy. But that day, the grand experiment that he said failed miserably. And, Chris, you've been there trying to make changes to your mechanics during the season. Very difficult to do, whether you're a pitcher or a hitter. Really hard to do. I mean, you know, sometimes it's necessary because you're in some kind of a funk. You have to do something different. But that's why hitters, you know, even if they know they're doing something wrong, and pitchers will say, all right, well, I'll change a little bit, but I don't want to start from scratch here and relearn myself in the middle of the year. 
in the same way that when they're on a really hot streak the last thing you really ought to do is ask a hitter what he's doing because then you can say he, he may not know what he's doing except <laughs> seeing the ball big I mean he might be hitting 500 over the course of a couple of weeks and you ask him well what specifically have you done to get to a 500 batting average and he starts thinking about it next thing you know he's 0 for 20. I don't want to talk about it right? <laughs> exactly the only guy that would talk about it anytime anywhere any place is Pete. Well he was amazing. I mean, talk about being the, the darling for the media back then imagine what he would be today. I never saw anything like it when he was going for the hit record and night after night day after day he entertained the media and he number one he took him out of the clubhouse so he didn't bother his teammates number two he enjoyed the banter back and forth he enjoyed the questions it wasn't like he had to do it. And everybody that came away came away with a notebook full of stories and a notebook full of good answers. Two balls two strikes to Brian Payne you bounced to first first time up. Missing wide will go full three and two. That's ball four. You know, as Jim Day alluded to, you know, they're different players. You know, you go to Pete Rose, he'll give you a straight answer to a straight question. If you want to talk to Jay Bruce and find out what's going on, you don't go to Jay because Jay will always say the politically correct thing. He doesn't want to ruffle feathers, he doesn't want to give excuses. But you talk to other players in that clubhouse, they all know that his left knee isn't right. They all know that he's played with injuries, but they respect the fact that he's going out there because. Mm -hmm. This team needs him. He's probably not going to be right till next year. He's not going to be 100%. And just as we saw Joey Votto, your left knee is a left handed batter, is the whole key to your stance, a whole key to your power, a whole key to your swing. And, and if you're hitting on roller skates, it's tough to get anything behind that swing. And that's basically where he's at right now. There's a soft line drive to the left. Marte's there, and there's one away. Remember when we were playing the Cleveland Indians and went into the the clubhouse to talk to a couple of the players that have been looking at the videos and looking at the Reds. Jason Giambi came up to me and he said, "How's Vado doing?" And I, we were talking about a couple of different things. That's a bunt. It will go foul. And I remember Giambi had very similar injury than Vado had, and he said, "I can tell." He can't plant at all. And I know exactly what he's going through. I know exactly what he feels like. And he said it really wasn't, I wasn't right ready till the next year by getting myself back to where I needed to be with an off-season regiment. They say a basketball shot begins with your legs and your feet. A baseball pitch begins with your feet and a baseball swing begins well, with your feet too. You're, you're right every one of them does but the problem is that this is a game of a bottom line of what do you produce what is your value to the ball club and that's why it's very difficult for a player to determine when he can come back and, and sometimes when he can be helpful to the team and when he's going to hurt the team. Short lead for Payne at first Cozart. Foul pop to the first baseman first time up high in the air to right. Lambo under it. Got it two away. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one look forward to our Miller time moment coming up later in the broadcast. We'll toast you Jesse later on. Great to have Jesse Jackson with us Gary great to have you with us helping out with the stats here and of course down in the truck. Josh Hall our producer. Brian Hunterman, our director. Lauren White's with us as usual, Diana dialing up some statistical numbers for us. Great to have KP with us. Kevin Penowit made the trek over from Jesse. Come on the bus with you. <laughs> he probably took the limo, knowing him, right? 
Bounce down to third. Harrison will get the force at second, and that will do it. Well, the Reds get a leadoff walk. Nothing to show for it. They still trail 3-1. Mercer do up, and we return. with the Reds but you can catch every strikeout every game ender every history making moment on MLB whip around weeknights at 10 Eastern on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Great to have our buddy Sean Casey at the ballpark today. Me and Kenny Albert doing the game for Fox. Great to see Case. Great to see him around the batting cage and here in his native town of Pittsburgh. Lives up in Upper St. Clair, just outside the city area. There's Case. Mandy dressed him well today, didn't she? Well, he brought that shirt <laughs> along with him. She probably said on the way out the door, "Make sure you bring your dress shirt, because on Fox Sports One, they demand you dress up." <laughs> He's the best. There's only one, right? You're right about that. And you know what he was looking at. Here's a swing by Mercer and a pop up right behind home plate. Wow. Great job by Mezzarocco. A lot tougher than that one looks. Spinning back towards the plate. Mez ha handles it, one away. You and I are talking to him behind the press box, and what's he doing? He's looking out towards Heinz Field where there's the ribs. <laughs> Boots. They're, they're selling ribs, racks of ribs between the two stadiums, and you know he's going to go there after the game. Chris. Well, I, I think it's an international rib competition. Yep. Where they determine who's got the best ribs. Of course, they probably come from the United States somewhere, but there are people who cook ribs for a living coming in from all ends of the United States to be in this competition. I heard that there will be a competition, a race after the ball game between Sean Casey and Jeff Brantley. <laughs> to see who can get over there first and fastest. I guarantee you, Montgomery Inn's got to be over there. <laughs> <laughs> the Andrews touch. Case will get there eventually. Somehow. Mandy's not here, the kids aren't here, so he can say, Well, I had to stay at the ballpark a little late today. Swing and a miss. Worley's retired. That's strikeout number five. And after a rocky first where he gave up a single to Lambeau, a walk to McCutcheon, and a homer by Walker, Alfredo's gotten it going, huh? Well, he's faced the minimum number of batters so really since the first inning. He did give up a hit the, uh, with two out in the, in the second to Josh Harrison, who was subsequently thrown out trying to steal. So he's really tightened it up and it's kind of what we said after the first inning George a lot of times the team scores early and then for whatever reason the energy of the game goes to pitching and their offense goes to sleep 
and if you can climb back into the ball game and the Reds are only two two runs back you got a chance to pull this one out. Reds got one back on the home run by Frazier still trailer three one. Here's Josh who flied to center single to center and then was caught trying to steal what the Pirates have done this year especially since about June the 19th is play the best baseball of anybody in the major leagues when playing at home. They are 23 and 9 over that stretch. So even with last night's win against the Reds the Reds still own them on the series so far they've won nine lost five the Reds have against the Pirates. Pirates are talking about winning two out of three here hoping for a three game sweep to try to sweeten their spot in. In the standings. It's about believing that you can and the Pirates believe they can right now the Reds are trying to get that mojo back. They've been at their best in the last month they've won 17 of the last 24 at home. Swing and a miss two and two you know when you lose as many one run games as the Reds do I think it eats at you a little bit. It's almost better to be blown out in the ball game really lose by 10 runs rather than just lose by one run game after game because then you go home and back to your home or your hotel you're thinking all right if I could have one at bat back or maybe one pitch back it would have made the difference in a ball game and it gets you to start doubting things. Six strikeouts for Alfredo Red still trail three one Simon do up and we return and go to the six. Here on Fox Sports Ohio. You're looking at Clint Hurdle, and we've talked so many times about the more and more defensive shifts we're seeing in the game of baseball. Clint Hurdle loves the defensive shift. We've talked about it all season long. But I'm not sure you've seen a defensive shift like we've seen the Dodgers put on last night in the 12th inning. It was a tie ball game. They brought Andre Ethier in from the outfield. There was one guy on the left side and four guys on the right side lined up completely in a line. Seth Smith, a known pull hitter, left-handed hitter, hit it right into the shift. So at this time it worked. Then they took the shift off, and Yasmani Grandal, the former red product, Hit one through the same side for the game winning run. So the Dodgers lost the game, but guys, I'm sure you haven't seen a shift like that. Always trying to reinvent the game. Huh, well, you know, I, I, we ran in our pregame show today a, a tech talk that we did with Clint Hurdle earlier this year, and it's about the shift because the Pirates have embraced the defensive shift probably more than any team in baseball. They were one of the ones really out in front of it. And I asked him what goes into the future here in, in Clint's mind and he thought you know it wouldn't surprise me that there will be a day in which infielders and outfielders will wear little GPS yeah. watches yeah. which will be pre programmed for certain hitters in certain counts and it will tell you exactly where to play and they can be accurate you know of course down to a couple of yards. So why not if they can do it. Simon bounces out to Harrison one away. Having said that, Chris, 
in this series and in the last couple of weeks the Pirates have shifted less than they normally do. They've overshifted on Mezzarocco. That's mm -hmm. the only one they've overshifted on so far and that resulted. You know it, it's resulted in a different approach by the Reds too. Actually resulted in a base hit by Mezzarocco yeah. last night but yeah the, rarely do you see a right hander being shifted upon as much as a left handed hitter. Here's Hamilton struck out flied out 0 for 2 drops a bunt down. Even if he gloves it barehanded. Probably would have been beaten out by the speedy Hamilton. So a base hit for. Billy he's on with one out. Uh, you want to see a little bit more of these out of Billy. This is a perfect bunt for him even with Harrison playing shallow. I mean Harrison is if he feels that ball and gets off a perfect throw bang bang at first base. But. Billy really deadens it very nicely. And now you've got the tying run at the plate. With a guy to hit a home run his last time up. Billy's sitting on 53 stolen bases. The ninth red to have over 50 in a season. That's a shot. And Hamilton will get back to first. Boy, did Frazier tattoo that one. But Mercer was in the right place. He's one step closer to the bag in double play position, and that may have helped him flag that one down. You know, whereas last night it looked like to me that Todd Frazier had a hard time seeing the ball coming out of the hand of Edinson Volquez, chased a couple of pitches way outside. Today he is seeing Worley big. So Frazier now one for two today with a homer. And it's not an easy time to see the see the ball come out of a pitcher's hand. I mean, there's shadows across the field. This is always kind of an odd start time at four o'clock. Here's Phillips. Brandon bounced into a five-four-three double play, then bounced out to second, 0 for two. Coming into today, he was four for eight against Worley in their matchups. Billy, one more stolen base, and he'll. Tie the club record of 54 stolen bases set by Bob Besher back in 1909 as a rookie. Interesting dynamic, too, as you watch Whirly. Working from the third base side of the rubber with his windup, and from his stretch, he also works from that third base side. And it throws across his body. A little more difficult to come up with a good pickoff move from there? Well, probably is. And I think rather than, you know, coming up with a good pickoff move, you do everything you can to just try to shut the running game down rather than try to pick guys off. He has not allowed a stolen base this year. There goes Billy. Here comes the throw. It will be in time, and they get it. a perfect throw from Russell Martin. They get Hamilton. And the Reds. Get a base hit, nothing to show for it. They leave Phillips at the plate.
Neil Walker in the first. The Reds got a run from a home run from Todd Frazier. Another look, Chris, at the caught stealing for Billy Hamilton in the sixth. Looked like he got a pretty good lead and a good break right there, but the other end of it, Russell Martin's throw is right on the money. Well, if that throw is anywhere not on the money, Hamilton's got a bag stolen. So it stands now that Vance Worley has not still given up a stolen base all year. And interestingly, in talking with Neil Walker about how do you defense a guy like Billy Hamilton, and Chris, you mentioned it yesterday that you almost need to be in front of the bag. He was behind the bag yesterday, and you now Walker said, you know, you, you try to block the bag if you can, but it depends on where the throw is. Ideally, you wish you could block the lane for Hamilton. You don't have the same restrictions that you have at home plate on a play at home plate. Well, but you, you can lay your leg down if you time. want, but I mean, sometimes Billy goes in there feet first, and sometimes he goes in head first. Here's Lambeau singled and flied out. This one bounced to the right side. It'll go foul. And you know, we talk about Bill Mazeroski, the great second baseman, the Hall of Famer for the Pirates. You know, had magic hands. He turned the double play as quick as anybody that ever played the game. People forget at second base. I mean, his legs were like tree trunks. He would plant down in front of the bag, and back then, that would certainly dissuade you from going hands first with tree trunks like Maz had. In I don't his think legs. anybody slid head first back in those yeah. days, did they? And he took the punishment, but he blocked the bag. I'm trying to think of the first player that I remember. I, maybe it was Pete Rose mm -hmm. who decided to go head first. Simon got it. Wheels fires. Lambeau retired one away in the sixth. JD, you've been watching Billy all season long, and yeah, he's got 50 plus stolen bases, counting on 53, but he leads the league in caught stealing, too. Yeah, he does, and uh, Joe Morgan was in the booth. Uh, we talked about that, where he was, you know, said he needs to cut down on his caught stealing. Well, Brian Price has been talking about it all year, and he talked extensively about it today, saying that he can't wait for the day when Billy actually figures out situational baseball. Not necessarily when to run. You guys have talked about this, but when not to run. But he says he's such an info seeker that he just basically is around Billy Hatcher all the time and those guys have a tremendous relationship and as you guys know how many people know baseball more than Billy Hatcher and he's working with him on situational baseball and in a year or so when he gets it down look out every day he spends time with Hatcher spring training he spent a lot of time with Eric Davis and of course over the last couple of years he spent a lot of time with Delano De Shields three outstanding base tutors and JD I know you know we see it I see it every day the thing that's impressed me more than anything is his willingness to learn and his willingness to ask questions about being a better center fielder and being a better base dealer and he'll ask anyone he even asked me a couple of games ago that's how far reaching it is he he got uh, was caught stealing on this past homestand and came off the field and instead of going back and looking at the video, it came over and said, hey, did I did I slide too early? Did I slow myself down? And in fact, I had noticed on that particular steal attempt that he slid early. And I said, yes. And he said, I, I knew it. I knew it. So he is refining it down to the very small details of baseball. And uh, that is great to see from a young guy. Because, you know, he reminds me of a guy that, you know, you knew well, Otis Nixon. You know, yeah. Otis had a little book. Remember that little book he had mm -hmm. on the top of his uh, his locker? And he'd make notes after every game. Well, he would make notes on the pitcher's moves yep. and what their sequences were, and whether a guy had a good move or not, or a deceptive move or a slide step. Of course, now a lot of that scouting is done for you. Joe in spring training had a great line for Billy. It's not the first pitch, it's the best pitch that you have to pick the steal on. Finding the best pitch is one of the keys to being a great base stealer. Uh, I mean, at, at some point, though, you have to really step back and realize that Billy Hamilton is a rookie mm -hmm. and that he's going through the major leagues for the first time. And he's going to be a hands down winner of the Rookie of the Year award. And you always want to get a little bit more. You want, you want your guys to be better and better. But 
you know, I think what he's done this year is pretty remarkable. And if he's been thrown out too many times because he's been too aggressive, well, I think you have to go through that to learn. And I think Billy Hatcher is a guy that understands that. And they're going to let him kind of learn on his own a little bit what those best running situations are, when the pitches are going to come to allow you to get the best chance of being a successful stolen base runner. You know, Joe could have been a 80, 90 stolen base guy a year, but during the Reds' heyday, 70. 3, 74, 75, 76. He was over 60 every year, but he stole the bases you needed to steal to win a game, not to put numbers up, and that's where Billy will be at some point in time. Well, uh, the other thing, though, George, I don't think back then there was anywhere near as much emphasis put on the back of pitchers to try to shut down a running game. There, you know, slide steps weren't nearly as common as they are now. I mean, guys really work on things a lot more to try to shut the running game down. That's why it's harder and harder to steal bases. 3 2 to Walker, who's one for two, the homer. He got him. So after giving up the home run to Walker in the first, Simon has been brilliant. Two through six. Red Steel trail three to one. A long ball kind of day in the first inning. Uh, base hit a walk, and Neil Walker's 18th home run made it 3 0 Pittsburgh against Alfredo Simon. Meanwhile, the Reds got one back on a big bolt from number 21, Todd Frazier. Frazier's 23rd homer of the year in the fourth got the Reds to within 2 3 to 1. That's where we are right now. The two pitchers have dominated on this day again. Alfredo Simon, after giving up those three in the first, gave up a single to Harrison in the second. And that's it since then. And for Vance Worley, Chris, he gave up the home run to Frazier. But other than that, he has managed the Reds lineup outstandingly well as we now head to the seventh inning. Well, he certainly does not appear to me like the guy that they said has been around the last three starts. He is right now riding the worst three game stretch of his major league career. An earned run average over six during that period of time. Back over the last five, he's one and three with an earned run average up over four. But he's figured out a way to throw the ball and get the Reds out here this afternoon. Uh, Worley in his starts with Pittsburgh, the most number of pitches he's had is 100. He's at 75 right now, and they're starting to rustle around in the Pirate bullpen as we go to the seventh inning. Well, you run out of time too. I mean, if he completes the seventh inning, then you turn it over to your two short guys. And you know, you look at the at the winning percentage of teams when they have a lead of two runs or more going into the eighth inning. Here's Brandon who was at the plate when Billy Hamilton was thrown out trying to steal in the sixth. So he'll lead it off in the seventh. Mezzarocco and Pena to follow. Phillips. Hit into a ground ball double play to third and bounced out to second 0 for 2.
One ball, one strike to the red second baseman. Tony Watson and just Wilson are the two lefties in the bullpen. Wilson is up and loosening for the Buckos. Missing on the outside corner. To right center, long run McCutcheon. He's got it measured and will close on it. Just a little too much air under that one. And a lot of speed in the center fielder's legs. Hey, you can always have the latest information on the Reds right at your fingertips. Follow Kevin Goheen from FoxSportsOhio.com on Twitter at FSO Ohio underscore K Goheen for the latest news and stories on the Reds. Already completed today. Ohio State winners over Navy 34 17 coming back in the second half after a first half where they had difficulty getting the offense going. Inside for a ball to Mesoraco. Devin bounced to third, flied to right. First of two, Cubs beat the Cardinals 5 to 1. It's the first of the day nighter. So that means in the division, right now the Cardinals are two games back of Milwaukee, the Pirates three, and the Reds eight and a half back. One and two. Home country for Devin from Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. Mazaraka always has a ton of family and friends that show up when he comes to Pittsburgh or for that matter, Philadelphia. Look out. Great years. What a year this young man has had now at the 20 home run mark. That ties him with Evan Gaddis for the major league lead among catchers. And you consider the time that he lost to the disabled list. Had a rib or a back injury for a while, also had a hamstring injury that put him on the list. And it was kind of a slow start to the year for him, but when he did get healthy, and even before he went on the disabled list, he was the hottest hitter in baseball for a while. I mean, you could not get him out. Hitting against the shift that we talked about that the Pirates have against him. The only batter that they've shifted against in the Reds lineup the first two games of this series. Three defenders on the left side of the infield. You know what I see now out of Mezzarocco's swing compared to what it was early in the year. I see more body parts moving and that's very typical of a guy who struggled recently. You're trying to get the bat through the zone. You don't want to be late. Getting your foot down or your hands ready. And sometimes you use your body too much. Pitchers do the same thing when they're trying to. To, to you know get their fastball in there when it's on a day when the fastball doesn't come easy. You got to work hard to do it and sometimes you. Get your body out of kilter by trying too hard. Two balls, two strikes.
Hey, one thing for a big crowd here, and it is looks like a sellout. It's awfully quiet. Maybe they just came over here from that football game where they saw Pitt win 62 to nothing, and they're they're tired of cheering. In a pitching kind of day too, and a pitching kind of night last night as well. That one game playoff here that the Reds Ooh. had, it was about the loudest I've ever heard in the stadium in Pittsburgh. And as Araco gets plunked. That'll bring the tying run to the plate again. Here comes Brian Pena. Second time in two nights he's been hit. Well, he's right on top of the plate, Mezzarocco. And the other thing is he doesn't give in. Uh, he doesn't bail out when he sees a pitch coming on the inner part of the plate because it might just be a curveball. But tough or not, those got to hurt. So one out one on here's Pena bounced to first and walked on a three two pitch in the fifth inning. Hey what you hang a little breaking ball or get a fastball up to Pena and this is the tie ball game. They're going to pitch him away away it's trying to make him take the ball the other way rather than give him something that he can pull. It's a spacious ballpark if you want to sneak a home run right down the right field line is the place to do it here. Left center field is like no man's land. That's just foul down the right field line. Nice catch. And a souvenir too. Good job. That's through on the left side a base hit the Reds will have first and second with one out for Jay Bruce. Well, the Reds have had a hard time mounting any kind of a threat here this afternoon against Wally. Good bit of hitting right there by Brian Pena taking the ball the other way after hitting a rocket shot foul down the right field line and it will not take. Very long for Clint Hurdle to make a move to the bullpen. He's already signaled for the left hander as he hobbles his way to the top of the pitcher's mound. Justin Wilson will be on his way in. Worley has pitched well through six and a third innings. He'll leave with a 3 1 lead. The two runners his responsibility. Time for our skyline chili call to the bullpen. You're watching Reds baseball in Fox Sports Ohio. Saturday, September the 6th. Arrive early, be one of the first 20,000 fans to receive a red stein presented by Hops House 99. Plus, make sure you take advantage of the four for $48 ticket offer for only $48 as you receive four Reds tickets plus a $15 Hofbrau House voucher. For tickets, call 513 381 Reds. Visit select Kroger locations or Reds.com slash tickets. 
Lefty lefty matchup Chris. Well it is they bring in Wilson the left hander Justin Wilson 6 2 200 pounder from Anaheim California will face Jay Bruce. They have faced each other before. Wilson one of the two left handers that Clint Hurdle has at his disposal. We saw Tony Watson last night. Game number 60 for this lefty. Bruce is two for seven against Wilson swings and misses on that one. And you know Jay's story while his numbers offensively aren't great against left handed pitching his home run numbers are this year. Of his 14 homers six have been against lefties and he has more home runs against left handed pitching in the last three years than anyone else in the majors. Fouled off to the left side and it's 0 and 2. Uh, Wilson not fooling around with him. He's not messing around with that slider at all. He's just trying to play good old country hardball with Jay Bruce. Up in the zone too, which is a spot that a lot of times a hitter will chase and really never be able to get on top of. Zero and two, two on, one out. Setting up down and away, and he got it. Ooh. That was the breaking ball right there, I think. We'll take another look at it again, and I'm also pitch by pitch, a three pitch at bat for Justin Wilson against Jay Bruce. Gas upstairs two times in a row, then a little bit of a cutter or a slider. That last pitch, 96, then 92 on the corner, and Bruce goes down one, two, three. Our Mazda pitch by pitch. So it'll be up to Cozart. Hit a foul pop retired in the third and then fly to right in the fifth. Two on one out. That's looped to the right side and out of play. Cozart one for five against Wilson in their matchups. The Reds offensively challenged the last two games. They didn't score till the eighth inning yesterday. Volquez had a no hitter. Through six innings yesterday. Today, the lone run, a home run by Frazier, and offensively challenged for the most part since the All Star break. Popped up behind first. Davis back. Who will get there? Davis can't hold on. A run's going to score. And going to third will be Pena. It's first and third for the Reds. Well, oh, you could tell when he was going out after that ball that Ike Davis was not going to make the catch. And he was probably looking for help out there from Neil Walker. Let's take another look at it and see if Walker would have been able to get there in time. He certainly had the better angle on it. Davis is turning, twisting everywhere, and just perfectly placed a little chip shot by Zach Cozart. Oh, it's an error charge to Davis. What do you think that conversation is like? It looked like Walker kind of gave up on it. He kind of pulled up about five or six steps before Davis made a stab at it. Well, he probably thought Davis had it. In fact, Davis may have even called it. So first and third. Now let's see if Schumacher can deliver the tying run from third. It goes in an error. The Reds score a run. And it's a 3 2 ball game. I've seen those called hits before. Yep. The Pirates last in the National League, their 97th error. The Reds have only 60 on the year. That's a strike. 0 oh 2. Schumacher struck out looking and bounced into a fielder's choice. 5 to 4. Tell you what, this guy cannot be. A day at the beach up there for a left handed hitter. Mm -mm. I mean, throwing 96 with some action on it. Woo. Got him. Well, the Reds get a run thanks to a hit batter, a base hit, and an error. It's a one run ball game.
2007, seven years ago today. What a play by Brandon Phillips, the possible game ender, and it is a game ender for the Reds on this play at home plate. Amazing. Really, I love those defensive walk-offs. Unbelievable play by the gold glover Brandon Phillips. Nate McLeod thought he had a base hit and a game winning hit, game tying hit, but instead DP gets the job done. And what a tag by Valentin at the other end right there. That ball was way in the air. He grabs it, tags the runner as he came across the bag, and that was one of the more memorable games the Reds have been here. They played a lot of games here. Over the years, of course, in the division, you're playing the Pirates at least 15 or 16 times a season. That was a gold glove year for Brandon. And this year has been the same kind of year, even with the injury. He's now working on 93 straight games at second without an error. That's the longest current streak among any second baseman. Here's Russell Martin. Martin today doubled, struck out. Alfredo Simon working into the seventh. Now it's a one run ball game. Tale of two stories, huh, Chris? Well, you know, you're always most susceptible in the first inning because the mound on the field was different than the one in the bullpen. You know, your head may not be in the ball game yet. And all of a sudden, you you know, you give up a base hit. You walk a guy. Guy jumps on the first pitch, hits it for a three-run bomb, and your team doesn't do much offensively to get you back in the game. Although it's a one-run game right now, Simon has pitched lights out since that first inning. First inning, one out. Lambo a single. McCutcheon a walk. Walker is 18th home run. Three nothing Pittsburgh. And the Reds have battled back with a home run from Frazier in the fourth, and then Cozart. Loops one into right. Davis charged with an error. And Mezzarocco comes home with a second run. Martin doubled his first time up in the first, then struck out swinging in the fourth. Sounded like a broken bat. And he'll get a new piece of lumber. Well, that's about usually what happens when you swing at one of Alfredo Simon's two seam fastballs off the plate. Pleasant day in Pittsburgh. Game two of the three games set. Reds trailing 3 2. That's snubbed down to third. Foul again. Reds' final trip into the Steel City this year. Pirates will come back to play the Reds' final three games of the season at Great American Ballpark. Count three two. And on the hands again. We've talked a lot, Chris, about the Reds' decisions that will come. Those pitchers that can be free agents as Watson loosens in the bullpen for Pittsburgh, but the Pirates have some key decisions to make too. And one of them is this guy behind the plate. Did they sign him to a long term deal? Well, I'm sure that's probably what he or his agent wants. He's been awfully valuable to this ball club. Hit hard but foul. A lot of that has to do with what do they have in the minor leagues, what other catcher options are out there uh, around baseball. And right now, it seems to be that if you're a catcher like Russell Martin, you're in a position of strength. There are far fewer catchers out there that are ready to hit the free agent market than there are, say, pitchers.
Try it again, 3 2. And he works a walk. Lead off batter on here in the seventh. Don't forget, after every Reds game today included, Fox Sports Ohio will break it all down for you, bring you the very first word from the clubhouse, from the players, from Ryan Price. Jim Day will be down on the field to get the complete story. Reds Live brought to you by Performance Kings Honda. Brian Giesenslaw will be anchoring our post game studio work today. So just like that from 78 to 88 pitches for Simon and one batter here in the seventh inning. And here's Ike Davis bounced out to first twice. And for the first time they'll get some action going in the Reds bullpen. Just missing down low, one and oh. Jumbo Diaz loosening under the tutelage of Mac Jenkins behind him. And Mesoraco will go out after the 2 0 delivery. Jeff Pico will join the conclave on the mound. I think more than anything right here, Jeff Pico is trying to remind him we can't afford a mistake. That is going to allow Ike Davis to hit one into the into the river in right field. So stick to your game plan. You've gotten them out a couple of times already, both on ground balls down to the first baseman. And what Davis is capable of hitting is something more off speed than he is Simon's fastball. You run that little two seamer down and away, you take away a lot of Ike Davis's power. Center field Hamilton edge of the warning track tagging at first will be Martin. He's coming to second the throw will not be in time and the runner advances. I'll tell you that guy is a gamer. Yep. He gives you great at bats. He's one of the top players in the country in the major leagues as far as on base percentage. And there's your catcher on a hot humid day in the bottom of the seventh inning taking an extra base on a fly ball to center field. Now Martin advances on the fly ball. There's one out runner in scoring position, and here's Starling Marte. Marte today bounced back to Simon and then struck out. They'll appeal down at first that he left too early. Uh-uh, says the first base umpire Jimmy Reynolds. Gotta watch Marte here first pitch. He was the leadoff hitter for a lot of the season earlier in the year for the Pirates, and he's a very aggressive guy at the plate. Down to third, backhanded by Frazier, holds the runner, got him. Two away. And down to the number eight spot in the order, Jordy Mercer. Now one of the big weapons the Pirates have had not just this year but the last couple of years is the way Clint Hurdle has run his bench. Once again this year the Pirates lead the National League with 51 pinch hits that's more than anybody else. They have more runs batted in from the pinch hit category than anybody else as well. So you get down to the eight spot with the pitcher due up next becomes a factor on this bench. Now. Neither Pedro Alvarez nor Travis Snyder have played the last two days, but 
Alvarez with a bad foot. Snyder has been sidelined, but Snyder did take batting practice today. They're the two best bench players they've had all year, but it's been a bench that's been very productive all season long for Clint Hurdle. And you ask yourself, what if you lose him right here? Do you go to the bullpen? Or do you let Alfredo Simon try to finish out the inning? Jose Tabata, wet ready if the inning is prolonged by Mercer. Chris sitting in the uh, Fox broadcast booth right next to us and we watched Sean Casey very often and you look at Russell Martin it reminds me of Sean Casey. Casey was not the fastest red maybe the slowest red but he got one of the best secondary leads of any red and Martin's the same way. He knows he's not a speed burner but look at the secondary lead that he'll get. Well with two out I mean you're not going to throw him out anyway unless it's an absolute shot to Jay Bruce. There's a shot to Frazier. Thankfully, it finds leather. The job by Simon to battle out of the runner in scoring position. Simon's due up in a 3 2 game. Photos using the hashtag Ohio fan photo. Here's today's fan photo of the game brought to you by AT&T. That's a good looking pair. A lot of Reds hats around PNC Park. Here's Alfredo talking to Jeff Pico. Am I hitting? Nah, sorry. <laughs> You've been there, Chris. Well, you know, he's one of the toughest guys you ever run into as far as trying to get him out of a ball game. Uh, he has had some conversations with Brian Price and Jeff Pico to the point at which they finally said, you know what, you are out of the game, period. And he just doesn't want to come out. You got to like that about him. But you also have to realize that best chance of scoring a run is probably setting up a pinch hitter. And that's what the Reds are going to do. So they'll get seven innings out of Simon. Well, Alfredo has a rough first inning, gives up a single to Lambo, a walk to McCutcheon, a three run home run from Walker, and then boy, did he slam the door. Your report card on Alfredo Simon, Chris? Yeah, you know, a, a quality start, certainly a really good start for Simon once you get that first inning out of the way. Here's Tony Watson, the left hander, will come in and pinch hitting for the Reds will be Chris Heisey. 
you talked about the bench for the Pirates and for the Reds this guy is the big bolt off the bench he came in to pinch hit yesterday in the eighth inning and bounced out to start the eighth an inning where the Reds rallied to score a run. Well, Watson was in the ball game last night. In fact, he was the pitcher of record as he got his tenth win out of the bullpen. Ten and one now in the 63 games in which he has appeared. Is he two for six against the lefty Watson? That's a strike. Two and one. When he first came up, and of course he's had three pinch hit home runs this year, nine for his career. I mean. He saw a lot of fastballs. Now, very seldom does he see a fastball as a pinch hitter in the strike zone. Well, he saw one there on a 2-0 count. That was almost guaranteed. He took that, I guess, in order to take a take a better look at Watson's delivery. Now the count has gone from 2-0 to 2-2, favoring now the pitcher. In the air to right, blooped. Long run for Lambeau. He will get there and glove it. One away. Heisey retired. Back to the top of the order, Billy Hamilton. Billy struck out first time up, fly to center, and then last time up, reached on a bunt hit down the third baseline, and then was thrown out for the 20th time this year, trying to steal by Russell Martin. Well, if he's going to bunt here, he'll probably bunt down the first baseline, batting right handed, kind of a push variety. Mike Davis is coming in from first base, but that really is not going to do a whole lot of good unless Billy Hamilton bunts it right down the line. That's when the first baseman fields it and tags the runner. But if he can get it somewhere between where Ike Davis is playing and the pitcher's mound, then you're in business. And one of the things that Delano Shields told him in a situation like this with a left handed pitcher on the mound and the first baseman off the bag, watch the second baseman. Because where Walker is, Chris, there's no way he can make it to first in time to cover the bag. Most second basemen will cheat over about 10 or 12 feet. Trying to punch it to the right side, swing and a miss, and it's one and two. So forget about the bunt now. the plate Watson scoops it up and they'll get him to it our Nissan drive of the game comes from Todd Frazier is 23rd of the year Chris uh, he hit him out there where the big men hit him big man caught it out there one handed too but for Todd Frazier that was an absolute bomb in fact he saw the ball very well today off of the Starter Vance Worley hit a line drive right at the shortstop with a man on base in the sixth inning. It took a walk, so he's had a good day at the plate. Walk first time up, homered, and then lined one to short. All those against Worley. Worley right now the pitcher of record on the plus side. Six and a third innings and two runs allowed. Dribbler down to second. Walker has it. And that'll do it. The Reds go quietly in the eighth. To the bottom of eight we go. Pitcher spot due up.
Friday, September 5th through Sunday the 7th. And see your Reds battle the Mets at Great American Ballpark. Purchase four Reds tickets for only $48. Receive a $15 Hofbrau house voucher. For tickets, call 513-381-REDS. Visit select Kroger locations or reds.com slash four for 48. Here's a new pitcher for the Reds, Jumbo Diaz, who will take over as Billy Hatcher peers out at the field here at PNC Park. Jose Tabata was in the on deck circle in the pitcher spot at the end of the last inning and he'll step to the plate to pinch it as we go to the ninth spot in the order here in the bottom of eight here comes Jumbo seven strikeouts for his predecessor who is also somewhat of a Jumbo and Alfredo Simon in seven innings of three run baseball the assignment for Jumbo Diaz pretty straightforward hold him right there. Reds Canary afford to give up a run here and really feel like that they're still in this ball game. Not with the way their offense has been since they've come to town. Three runs, four hits, an error for the Pirates. Two runs, three hits, no errors for the Reds. Here's Tabata, another one of the pinch hitters who's been successful for the Buckos this year. That's a strike on the inside corner. The numbers for Tabata on the year eight for 28 as a pinch hitter with five runs batted in. Top of the order Harrison do up next. It's been a year Chris where from the get go even with the. Injury to Matt Latos and by the way congratulations to Matt and Dallas on the birth of their. Brand new baby this week Landon. He'll be pitching when the Reds head to Baltimore. Even with that, the starting pitching has been exceptional. But the Reds bullpen, uh, starting with the injury to Aroldis Chapman and the great job that Broxton did early on. There's a fly ball to right. Here comes Bruce. He'll squeeze it. The bullpen never really has had everybody in place and never really has been as good as you thought it was going to be at the start of the year. Well, it's because they started out the year. Trying to fill in spots. Mm -hmm. And there has been a time, though, when the bullpen has been very good if you turn it over to those pitchers who pitch normally in games in which the Reds are winning. So, you know, and that's a handful of guys. You know, Sam McCure, Broxton, and Chapman, those guys for the most part have been lights out. Manny Parr, throw him in that, in that group as well. Where the bullpen has struggled is where the, the game, you're down by a couple of runs, and then you go to guys that don't. Pitched at the end of the ball game, and they're the middle relievers, and they have had a tendency to blow up a little bit. One away, here's Josh Harrison. One for three, a single to center, and he was out trying to steal in the second inning. You know, that said, I think every bullpen in baseball has two halves, and they've always been like that. You got half the pitchers down there that are pitching games that, you know, you're behind in, and you got half the pitchers that you're pitching in games in which you're ahead in, and there's a big difference. One ball delivery drops in there for a strike. One of the bright spots has been this big guy. There's Mark Melanson up loosening the closer for the Pirates who nailed it down yesterday. Number 70 has been a bright spot for the Reds this year, hadn't he? Well, he's been a surprise. I think in spring training they, they saw some potential in Jumbo. He's been around a long time. Obviously, we've chronicled many times his. His long trek to the major leagues and how this is his first shot at age 30 years old. But he's throwing strikes. He's throwing strikes with all of his pitches. And they put him in some tough situations and they've been very happy with his mound presence. Missing inside, so it's three and one. I mean, if he doesn't take advantage of it now, he never will. Up and in. So one out walk. One out, one on, and here's Lambo. Insurance run down there at first for Plant Hurdle. Jeff Pico will head to the phone and get the bullpen cranked up one more time. 
17 stolen bases for Harrison caught for the fifth time this year back in the second inning on a nice throw by Mezzarocco. Lambeau today single to left and scored on the home run by Walker in the first fly to right and bounce back to the pitcher. Thirty two homers ninety nine knocked in in the minors this year for this hard swinger. Would have been up earlier in the year had it not been for a hand injury he sustained. In fact, they were prepared to call him up within a day or two when the injury occurred. So he finally gets up here at the tail end of August. And an at bat last night as a pinch hitter and got a base hit. Short lead for Harrison. Not going. That's a strike. Nick Leva rolls through his signs from third in the coach's box. Harrison peers across the infield and then gets his lead. Little bigger lead. Runner not going. That's foul down the third baseline. And another nice play. <laughs> Been a good day for the ball girls and the ball boys and the fans. Well, now both ball girls, one down each line, has made a nice play. Good job. Tip of the cap. That was from her compatriot on the other side. One ball, two strikes. Runner not going. That's bounced down to second. Phillips will get one. On to first. Four, six. Yes, sir. E three in the Reds. An inning ending double play set the stage for inning number nine. Phillips due up first. The Reds need a run. By authority of the Cincinnati Reds, it may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Hey, don't miss Fox Sports Live as the crew brings you the latest news and highlights from full day of baseball, full day of football, and a whole lot more on this first Saturday of college football. Watch Fox Sports Live nightly on Fox Sports One and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Uh, here in Pittsburgh overlooking the Roberto Clemente bridge we go to the top of the ninth inning three runs four hits and an error for the Buccos two runs three hits no errors for Cincinnati if you joined us late 
with Alfredo Simon on the mound. The Pirates scored three in the first. Lambeau a single, McCutcheon a 3 2 walk, and then Neil Walker's 18th home run, 3 0. From there on, Simon was brilliant going seven innings, allowing four hits in those three runs. He struck out seven. Meanwhile, the Reds got a homer from Todd Frazier in the fourth, his 23rd of the year, off Vance Worley, who pitched well, six and a third, allowing two runs. One of them in the seventh inning came after a hit batsman of Mezzarocco, Pena's base hit, and then an error by the first baseman, Ike Davis, that allowed the second run to score. So here's the closer. Mark Melanson to face Brandon Phillips as we go to the ninth, Chris. Well, Melanson was in last night's ball game. He pitched a one, two, three, ninth. He faced Bruce Negron and Skip Schumacher to finish it off. Not a overly hard thrower, but he's got a very good breaking ball, and that's his go to pitch. He'll wear out that down and away corner against right handers. That one a little high and misses. Brandon today bounced into a double play, bounced to second, and then fly to center in his career one for seven against Mark Melanson. He'll be followed by Mezzarocco and then Pena. Mezzarocco two for six against Melanson, and Pena's 0 for one. That's a strike. In his career, Melanson's 2 0 and an ERA of 1.05 against the Reds. A brilliant setup man for Jason Grilly. And then when Grilly was injured last year, he came up big time with 16 saves. And this year, after they traded Grilly, he's taken over and hasn't missed a beat. That's a strike. That's his bread and butter right there, Chris. Well, it is. And you can see that it was very difficult for Brandon to pick that up. In fact, it looks like everything he throws kind of cuts away from right handers. He's got a natural cut on his fastball, and that breaking ball is. Evidently hard to see the spin on. A defensive swing just stays alive there. One and two. Mezzarocco on deck, paying you to follow. Yeah, well, certainly the Reds have some power coming up in this, this inning. Won't bite at it. 2 2. So now he's thrown three of those breaking balls in a row. And, you know, the more a hitter sees the same pitch, the more he goes to school on it and kind of locks it into his memory. Got to figure Melanson's going to go with something else here. Looks like he's, sh he's shaking off Russell Martin to get back to a, a curveball again. Dribble down to short. Mercer's flip will get there in time. One away in the ninth. Well, you figure this is the Reds' best chance here. 20 home run, Devin Mezzarocco, two for six in his career against Melanson today. Bounced to third, flied to right, and hit by a pitch. He was hit by a pitch in the seventh and later came around to score on the arrow by Davis. They play him deep, swung a couple of steps towards left in center and left, straight away and right. the air of Mike Williams here Chris he, he'd worry out slider after slider on that down and away corner against right handers Melanson does it with his cutter. Two balls one strike. I think Russell Martin thought that was a strike he's got his head turned now and talking to Brian Knight saying hey I think that was caught the corner there. He certainly doesn't seem to be in a hurry to give Devin Mezzarocco a fastball. Two balls, two strikes, one out in the ninth. 
No shift on Mesoraco this time. Mm -mm. This one hit pretty good to left. Marte back. Warning track wall. He'll haul it in. Two steps from the wall. Just about 390 feet away. He hauls in the drive for Mesoraco. Boy, I thought he may have gotten that just a little bit better than it turned out. That, I guess, is the difference between getting a fastball and a curveball. Where you've got to supply all of your own power on that curveball. It just didn't carry as far. So another sellout crowd, the 17th of the season, 38,023. On their feet as Pena comes to the plate in the ninth. Pena bounced out, walked, and singled. That's a strike. Oh, and two. It's been a year of the one run games for these two teams, the Pirates. 50 the Reds 51 run games the Pirates have won 26 lost 24 the Reds have won 19 and lost 32. One and two. A day when the Reds once again can't muster an offense, and the Pirates have taken the first two of this three game set. Vance Worley will get the win, Melanson will get the save. And the Reds, for the 33rd time this season, have lost a one run encounter. The final. Just as it was last evening, 3 2. And Chris, again, a day when the Reds are offensively challenged. Well, and they're, they're offensively challenged by a pitcher that has been absolutely riding a horrible streak of being knocked all over the place the last three outings. It's not like the Reds faced Cy Young this afternoon. You got to hand your hat a little bit to Vance Worley, what he did. But I mean, when you get three hits overall, one was a home run, one was a ground ball base hit, and the other was a bunt. You've got to go back and reevaluate your offensive capabilities because the Reds certainly are not doing that right now. 3-2 final at PNC Park. More to talk about after these messages.